بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ السلام علیکم ایوری ون بیک ٹو کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ وی آر موونگ فارورڈ ود وسل بلوئنگ وی ہیو لکڈ ایٹ دا ڈفرینٹ فیکٹرز افیکٹنگ وسل بلوئنگ دا ڈفرینٹ ٹائپس آف وسل بلوئنگ دا فنڈامنٹلز آف وسل بلوئنگ اینڈ ناؤ وی گوئنگ ٹو کم ٹو اے ویری امپارٹنٹ پارٹ آف وسل بلوئنگ وچ از دی پروسیس آف وسل بلوئنگ دیٹ واٹ آر دا اسٹیپس دیٹ شوڈ بی ٹیکن بائی دی آرگنائزیشن اینڈ دا وسل بلوئر وائل لکنگ ایٹ وسل بلوئنگ سو دیر شوڈ بی اے اسٹرکچر اینڈ اے میکنزم ان پلیس سو دیٹ وسل بلوئنگ can be institutionalized so that it can be considered in the right way so that the consequences of whistle blowing do not adversely affect the organization but actually are considered to be a more of a corrective action and it should not be uh, based upon retribution or adversity or enmity or some other factor which would have multiple implications for the organization and for the different people involved in the whole process of whistle blowing so We are going to look at the process of whistle blowing today, ladies and gentlemen. It has different steps, five different steps uh, within the whole process. So let us look at the different steps of whistle blowing. So in the first step, uh, it is very important to reduce opportunities to commit unethical or illegal conduct. Even as a whistle blower, new employees must be screened effectively and there should be no opportunities that could motivate unethical or illegal conduct. So that is uh, very important. So right at the beginning there should be the right orientation there should be the right selection process there should be the right motivation and people should be made aware about what whistle blowing is all about what are its consequences what is the process how it can be undertaken ladies and gentlemen now regular reinforcement should also be done to motivate employees to avoid any wrongdoing through different laws so again it's not that you just once uh, orient uh, or uh, give that information to the employees but it should be done on a regular basis preferably on a six monthly basis so that should be done uh, by the human resource uh, department or by the ethical committee or by uh, the uh, ethics manager within an organization and it's very sad uh, to mention that uh, maybe i might not be able to mention those cases because they are still confidential that uh, some very good companies uh, in pakistan who are multinationals they tend to motivate employees to uh, whistle blow but when an employee whistle blows then there is retaliation against that employee and that employee has to suffer so uh, a double message should not be sent the message should be clear it should be candid it should be pragmatic and it should be straightforward and it should not be uh, a sugar coated poison uh, establish if the observed activity is actually wrong so again that is very important that uh, naturally whistle blowing is based upon observation and it has to be also ascertained that it is actually wrong and not only a little bit of a deviation or not only a little bit of flexibility but is uh, actually malafide with bad intention an activity will be wrong if it is illegal unethical or illegitimate and the decision to report the perceived activity should be determined by the seriousness of the act so again ladies and gentlemen uh, it has to be illegal it has to be unethical it should be illegitimate uh, it should be uh, disconforming to uh, any established law and the seriousness of the act will be determined uh, based upon uh, how it is being reported Uh, and that is extremely important no so the second step is if the reporting is effective uh, there is no other action that can be taken and that the personal position of the whistle blower do not influence the decision so again uh, the whistle blowing episode or the whistle blowing context should be looked independent of the person's position power authority and it should be given uh, a proper understanding and proper analysis that Uh, what are the implications for the organization step 3 is the uses of internal mechanisms in the organization to raise concerns so again there should be uh, internal organizations uh, sorry internal mechanisms there should be proper platforms where whistle blowing can be done critical information systems or internal reporting mechanisms must be in place in the organization at an appropriate level so these uh, cis which is the critical information system or the IRMs the internal reporting mechanisms must be in place so that they can facilitate whistle blowing and they can encourage people to come out and share what is going wrong in the organization this is done to ensure that the employees follow the correct internal channels and do not uh, go to the damaging external channels like a regulator or the media because once it goes into the media then it becomes becomes sensational and then sometimes the regulator also does not understand what are the implications of certain actions or certain decisions they might not be malafide they might have been done with good content but they might not be following the proper matrices or the process flows but there might be some consideration for it so first of all it should be 
that the mechanism or the process which is established should be undertaken internally before it goes external because later on then there is a lot of hue and cry. The fourth step is that organizational policies and procedures must be used and applied to what they are doing. Once the whistle has been blown, the organization should take action and investigate the matter even if there is a dispute as to whether or not the activity is legitimate or not. So, again there, there should be not an option just to throw it into the trash can and dispose it off. Uh, the whistle blowing episode or content should be uh, professionally, meticulously and articulately studied, analyzed and then a decision should be taken that what is happening, is it right or wrong and what are the remedies to that particular decision. The organization might choose to take steps or might ignore the whistleblower depending on the, on the policies and procedures of the organization. There is a danger that in an open door policy run by a corrupt management. Uh, they might work against the whistleblower and that is very common. So, what we see is, is that retaliation and victimization tends to take place and the whistleblower gets cornered and usually sometimes also gets terminated and has to face a lot of penalties uh, for their right doing and raising their voice. So, that should not be the case in any organization. So, the last step is basically that uh, once internal mechanisms are not responding, then as a last resort, one can justify external whistleblowing. Uh, when all of the internal channels have basically been exhausted. So, that comes into play. The whistleblowers often choose the external channel if they are of the opinion that the case might be treated as more credible. So, on a more serious note, uh, what we see is, is that the whistleblowers uh, have many complications and implications. And in these complications and implications, the whistleblower has to take many decisions and also follow uh, the processes which are given by the organization. Many a times when they follow the processes and steps, given by the organization, their voice is snubbed or they face retaliation or victimization and they are sometimes pushed outside of the organization whereby they not only lose their job, but they also have to face many problems within society. Many a times the organizational management, uh, if it is unethical, they come up and conjure up different stories uh, against the person who is blowing the whistle. They come up with uh, stories of corruption, they come up with stories of sexual harassment, they come up with different issues, uh, personalizing the whole issue so that they can discredit the whistleblower. Now, that takes place in many uh, organizations across the world and also in organizations within, within Pakistan and we see that a person must be very careful uh, in whistleblowing and must be able to guard and also ensure that he or she does not suffer uh, mega losses uh, because of the whistleblowing. Secondly, what is very important is that the organization should have a proper process a process which is unbiased, a process uh, which is open, a process which enables any whistleblower to blow the whistle and not face adverse consequences. And in that process, the, the management or the committee uh, can analyze what has been uh, raised as an issue and based upon that candid and honest uh, truth based, value based analysis uh, and understanding of the issue then they can proceed forward to see that uh, is that uh, whistleblowing or that complaint genuine or non-genuine and then move forward. And in case the whistleblower sees that the internal mechanism is not working in his or her favor and in favor of the episode or issue that they are highlighting, then they can go external and then make a lot of hue and cry and make the public and the regulators and also uh, different uh, institutions aware of the uh, negativity or of the corruption or dishonesty uh, taking place within the organization. Thank you.